Well, it's a big surprise. It was not what the polls were suggesting or I think what the market was expecting. Uh, the market and the polls were expecting a narrow majority at best and possibly a hung parliament. But what's relevant to the markets and to your viewers, I think, you know, what, what the impact of this is going to be on the economy and financial conditions. Uh, I think, and I, I, I'm, I'm very positive about what this means for sterling or for UK assets. And that is, I think, particularly significant because I believe that Brexit as a policy is a big mistake. I think Brexit is going to do structural damage, serious structural damage to the UK economy in the long term. But for the next year or two, this creates a lot of upside for the pound, for a lot of other British assets, British property, British domestic stocks, simply because by the beginning of this year, the markets were discounting a far worse outcome than just the long run damage of Brexit. They were discounting the so-called no deal crash out, which would have been well, a let total me, let me ask you on that. And that's not going to happen. Since, since, it's, yeah. since it will be such a large majority for yeah. the Conservatives yeah. here, is there not a risk that this brings the hard Brexiteers back to the table to urge Johnson to push for something that's more aggressive with Brussels? No, I think ironically the fact that it's a large majority is actually an insurance against that. Had it been a very narrow majority, there was a reasonable fear that Johnson would still be in hock to the uh, so-called European Research Group, the ERG, who are the real hardliners, who are seeking not just Brexit, but a total rupture with the European Union. Now that he's got a large majority, he's got his own mandate, he is going to be able to pursue a relationship with Europe which may or may not accord with his ideology but is going to be in his personal interests as Prime Minister so because he wants a successful economy. Given yeah. the kind of seats that the Tories have won, mm -hmm. I mean former mining towns that, mm. that were wiped out yeah. by, by Thatcher's policy mm. uh, against the NUM in the 1980s well voting concern this is absolutely seismic yeah. so the Tories have to deliver for them and, and the Prime Minister was very keen to talk about one nation Toryism That's as right. well which you're implying brings him back to the centre so let me put it to you a softer Brexit one nation Toryism huge amount of spending will take place yeah. under the Conservatives as well surely this will galvanise the economy rather than being as damaging as you mentioned no I, I think in the long run you know you can't you can't improve the structure of the economy by spending more money today but you can make sure that for the next couple of years there's going to be a strong economy and I completely agree with you in order to deliver on those new seats that he's he's now conquered in previously you know impassable parts of the country for the Tories there are two things he's got to do he's got to deliver a strong economy and he's got to get Brexit done. Now, what both of those things mean is that for the next year, he's got to do two things. He's got to ensure that there's not any kind of financial shocks or trade shocks or abrupt changes in the relationship with Europe. So you think that means a longer transition That period? means a longer transition. How long? Because we've yeah. got this 11-month time frame yeah. at the moment. You, what you're going, what, I, I know what you're going because you told us off camera. You tell the viewers. Yeah. Well, the, the, the big worry that the market had was that even if uh, Johnson won, which he now has, mm. that he has now set himself another deadline, which is December 31st next year, by which he has promised to finish the entire negotiation on a trade deal with the European Union. That is clearly impossible. Everybody in Europe is saying it's impossible. These trade deals take three, four, five years uh, to negotiate. So he has set himself this deadline. He's promised to get that de deadline done. But in practice, he won't be able to do it. So he has a choice. Does he extend the deadline? And there is a provision in the withdrawal agreement to extend it by up to two years. In other words, until December 2022. In order to do that, he will have to break one of his promises, which was not to extend the deadline. But, the, but this is where we get to the get Brexit done thing, because the overriding promise he's made is get Brexit done. Which now, what does that mean? That means withdrawing from the European Union in January. Which uh, and we're, we're hearing we could see yeah. another reading of the withdrawal yeah. as soon as Friday yeah. as well. So that's very quick. But the other aspect of get Brexit done is he's got to ensure that for the next year, Europe does not continue to dominate the headlines, dominate the uh, parliamentary agenda. Yeah. So he doesn't want the negotiations with Europe over the next 12 months to be the dominant factor in British life. The only way to avoid that 
is to extend the okay, transition yeah. period, uh, uh, which is why I'm sure it will happen. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.